The beginning of any season means a fresh start for everyone. New goals to achieve, new gear to grind, and new achievements to obtain. But whether your goals are to just meet some new people, have some fun, farm some conquest, or for the more serious gamer, you could be looking to get your first 1800, 1200, or even 2400 and above. But no matter your goals, there's one thing that's going to make everything a lot more enjoyable, and that's playing the strongest composition for your class and spec. So we thought, why not reach out to our rank one consultants, analyze recent data, and put together a list of the best 3v3 compositions for every spec in Dragonlance Season 2. Before we get into it though, if you seriously want to climb rating and achieve your goals this season, nothing's better than our brand new Master in Minutes product over at our website skillcap.com. It's there we take the highest priority skills proven to help you climb the ladder at a rapid rate, and then break them down into a step-by-step -step course of bite-sized 1-2 to two minute videos that are easy to understand and digest. So while you wait for your next arena game to pop, you can learn everything you need to climb. That's not all though, as every week we release brand new arena commentaries where rank 1 players teach you how to win in even the trickiest of matchups. Seem too good to be true? Well don't worry, we're backed by a rank up guarantee. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill capped, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So so what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below and get the rating you've always wanted. But now, back to the video. Kicking things off, we have the S tier, which includes the absolute strongest comps for the current meta right now. Our first composition may come as a surprise, as when 10.1 was announced and the crowd control changes were being introduced, we all predicted setup comps will fall by the wayside. RMP is the exception though, and when you think this composition is down for the count, it just bounces back even stronger. Being one of the few non-caster cleaves that is able to still be dominant in the current caster cleave heavy meta we reside in. Even though, as we mentioned, crowd control is far less potent, and PvE damage is the reigning king. RMP is still capable of doing incredibly high burst damage, and between all three specs, still has an abundance of control for both survivability and offensive setups. What gets RMP its S tier ranking is the combination of subtlety, discipline, and then either frost or fire mage, and as a result will be the best composition for all four of these specs right now. That being said, RMP remains to be a safe haven for practically all rogue and mage specs, as well as also being playable for either Holy Paladins or Restoration Druids. So if you prefer to play either Assassination, Outlaw, or even Arcane Mage, any variation of Rogue Mage will still end up being one of, if not your strongest composition options. But remember, it will of course cause the comp to naturally drop down a few tiers in power depending on which variation of the spec or healer that you play with. So it can either be S tier or B tier if you opted for something like Holy Paladin, Arcane, Outlaw for example. If you play Rogue but prefer a more PvE and less setup focused composition, then look no further than our next S tier composition, Destro Rogue Healer. This composition takes the high sustained and burst damage of a Destruction Warlock and pairs it up with the lockdown and control of a Rogue, making it great into a lot of the popular caster compositions right now. Right now, both Subtlety and Assassination work equally as well in this comp, and for healers, you can quite honestly play with anything to varying levels of strength. Restoration Shaman, Evoker, Discipline, Holy Priest, Restoration Druid, Holy Paladin, or even Mistweaver. All of them have their own strengths and weaknesses depending on what you're playing into. Holy Paladins looking to push rating will find this composition being their best option. Moving on, one of if not the strongest composition as a whole right now is of course, Balanced Druid Destruction Warlock Healer. We all know how dominant casters are right now, and this composition takes the undisputed best two and pairs them up. This is the ultimate caster cleave. Neither Destruction nor Balanced Druid can really be shut down and can always get somewhat decent damage out no matter what's going on in the game. Then when left free, Balanced Druids can completely control the pace of the game with the most overpowered crowd control in the game right now in Cyclone. Whereas Destruction Warlock, as always, has the threat of Chaos Bolts if you leave them free. So you can't really shut this comp down or prevent their damage, meaning it will inevitably just PvE you down. When two casters are this dominant, it means you can reliably carry any healer, so honestly again, you can play with whichever you prefer for varying results. The best two options though have to be either Restoration Shaman or Mistweaver Monk depending on if you prefer a more aggressive or passive version of the comp. Moving swiftly on, the final composition making the cut for that coveted S tier spot is Destruction Warlock, Frost, or Fire Mage Healer. Mage Lock has always been a timeless composition, and has had pretty much every variation and combination of all six specs be meta at some point, and can still quite in all honesty do well to this day. Right now though, Destruction and Frost or Fire depending on if you're facing melee or casters, with Fire being better into casters and Frost being better into melee, primarily though what has always made this composition strong is due to the sheer amount of durability, damage, and control that both Mage and Warlock are capable of bringing to the table. With the synergy between both Mage and Lock being so strong, it again makes the perfect groundwork for a multitude of different variations that really any healer can slot into and perform well. 
Mistweaver Monk, Restoration Druid, or Preservation of Ochre are without a doubt the best three options though, and will be the strongest comp for either Druid or Evoker healers. Not to mention, if you're a Warlock that doesn't really resonate with the playstyle of Destruction, then no worries, as Demonology can perform very well in MLX as well. But with the spec being slightly weaker than Destruction, it will however be more of an A plus composition rather than S. But for a more complete ranking of each variation of any of the compositions covered in this video, be sure to check out our articles page, we'll leave a link in the description below. That's it for our coveted S tier. Now we're going to be dropping down one tier to our A plus compositions. These are all incredibly strong still, but unlike our S tier comps, have some slightly weaker matchups as opposed to being good into everything. The first two compositions joining this tier are going to have Havoc Demon Hunter at the core, DH Boomy Restoration Shaman, or DH Destruction Warlock Restoration Shaman. This takes one of the two best casters right now and pairs them up with a Demon Hunter to provide that consistent high pressure and much needed moral strike effect. Why both of these comps work so well is just down to the sheer amount of damage they're capable of doing, coupled with the fact Demon Hunter is one of the few melees able to perform decently well in a caster heavy meta. We've also seen both these compositions played to similar strength with either Discipline, Mistweaver, or Evoker healers, so bear that in mind. The first two melee cleave compositions making it into our list are, of course, both with an Enhancement Shaman. We've all now seen how ridiculous Enhancement can be right now, and alongside Demon Hunters and Rogues are one of the few select melee specs still able to do decently well in a meta like we have right now. The first of the two compositions being Enhanced Sub Discipline Priest. This takes the immense burst of Enhancement and pairs it up with a bunch of additional damage modifiers for the ultimate cheese comp. Whereas the other strong option also happens to be a Fury or Arms Warrior's best composition as well. We're of course talking about Turbo Cleave. This is another timeless composition that tends to live or die in the meta depending on the power of Enhancement Shaman, and as we know right now they're incredibly dominant and as such the power of Turbo Cleave rises. You've got that high consistent pressure of two decently durable melee with a ton of utility and survivability options, and of course a mortal strike effect, making for a solid composition that can do relatively well into most things with some exceptions. Moving back to the caster cleaves now, our next two compositions are for Elemental Shaman, and that's either Ellie Boomy or Ellie Destro. Right now, both are equal in terms of strength, as you're again just pairing up an Elemental with one of either of the two best casters right now in Destruction Warlock or Balance Druid. Both of these comps can be very strong into opposing casters thanks to all that instant damage and disruption that Elemental brings, but as always, Elemental can still struggle into some of the more setup based compositions like RMP or Jungle. As a whole, you can look to play with most healers, with either Restoration Shaman, Restoration Druid, or Mistweaver being preferred. The final comp joining our A-plus tier is Balanced Druid Frost Mage Healer. Not really much explanation needed here, Balanced Druids and Mages are both very strong, and this is just another variation of two strong casters paired up together. What stops this from being S tier though is that both Mage and Boomy have far better composition options available to them. Nonetheless, still a very powerful comp. With our most dominant specs out of the way, we have to drop down to the A tier composition, starting off with a few Shadow Priest comps. Shadow Priest has undoubtedly got a lot stronger thanks to the rework in 10.1. That being said though, still has its clear weaknesses in comparison to other casters. The two best options right now for Shadow are when opting for double threat caster comps, which is required for a spec that's required to hard cast as much as Shadow does. So either Owl Play, which is when playing with a Balanced Druid and either Restoration Shaman or Mistweaver Healer. And then Shadow Play, which is of course when paired up with a Destruction Warlock and either a Restoration Druid, Restoration Shaman, or Mistweaver Healer for best results. But unfortunately, both variations can have some increasingly difficult matchups into some of the higher ranking comps on this list. Next, we have a composition for all Hunters and Ferals, Jungle Cleave. Jungle Cleave, much like Mage Lock, has been around for as long as we can remember, and the synergy between Feral and Hunter is undoubtedly timeless, providing that consistent high pressure paired up with instant crowd control that demands your opponents play perfect defensively to survive. Although, this is one of the few comps that has undoubtedly fallen in strength after the changes to crowd control and rise of high PvE damage casters. Much like MLX or RMP, all variation of Hunter specs can be played inside of jungle, with all three actually performing at around the same level of strength depending on what you're facing. Both Feral and Hunter have a few other composition options, also finding themselves in our A tier. As we've seen, Ferals have decent success with a more PvE focused composition involving a Destruction Warlock and Restoration Shaman. Whereas Hunters are able to play what's known as Thug Cleave, a high burst control composition with a subtlety rogue to similar levels of success. 
With our high tiers covered, it's time to delve into the mid and low tier specs and their best compositions. First up, we have the Fallen Kings of last season, Retribution Paladins, who have massively fallen in power mostly due to the caster filled meta where they just can't hold their own anymore. With that said, Retribution Paladins are still finding the most success with the same comp, which is when paired up alongside either an Arms or Fury Warrior, then either an Arsham, Ardruid, or Mistweaver Healer. Our next B tier composition is one that's quite a sleeper and that's Frost DK Devastation Evoker Healer. This remains to be the best composition for both Frost DK and Devastation Evoker. This composition works so well as both Frost DK and Devastation focuses heavily on AoE burst. And with Frost DK having the ability to group up all enemies, it makes for some nasty synergy, but if enemies know what's coming and respect it accordingly, you can quickly get overwhelmed between setups. Another spec we've yet to mention that also finds itself in our B tier is Affliction Warlock, with our strongest composition being when paired up with a Balanced Druid. Quite honestly, there isn't much reason to play Affliction right now with how strong Destruction currently is. That being said though, Affliction can still have some very strong matchups thanks to its ridiculously high damage output. But even despite their damage output, Affliction still has a lot of counters and can struggle to both survive themselves and finish off enemy targets. Last up for making it into our B tier are Windwalker Monks. Windwalker right now is just in a tricky spot, as usually they do very well when paired up with other melee, namely Death Knights, but with such a caster dominant meta and Death Knights being in dire need of buffs right now, Windwalkers are struggling to find a spot in the meta. So despite their strongest composition being paired up with either a Balanced Druid or Destruction Warlock, both of these specs have far better options if they want to play with a melee. We've made it to the bottom tier of C and there's one spec we've yet to mention still, Unholy Death Knight. Unholy players are clearly suffering right now, and the removal of PvP talent Spell Warden couldn't have come at a worse time. Previously, Death Knight was as close to immortal against casters as you could be, but now with AMS breaking in just a few seconds and their pressure just not being anywhere near enough to ever really threaten kills outside of maybe openers, the problems don't end there as Unholy is among a few select melee without access to a permanent healing reduction effect, making their composition options very limited and struggle to be carried even by the strongest of casters right now. The only real composition options that leaves them with are either TSG, Walking Dead, or Demo DK. If you want to learn more tips on how to outplay the competition this season, be sure to check out skillcap.com. We have three brand new courses that are designed to make you a better player in Season 2. Becoming a member today will also allow you to talk directly to Rank 1 players in our Ask a Pro forum, where you can get personalized help with all of your PvP related questions. We're the only service that guarantees you will gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you always wanted by clicking the discount link below. And as always, thank you all for watching. Good luck in the start of your season climb. And from everyone here at Skillcapped, we hope you have a great rest of your day.